우리 시간 하나님의 말씀을 같이 보도록 하겠습니다. 하나님의 말씀은 The Word of God today. The Word of God is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7-10. The Word of God is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7-10. Or because of these supposedly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults, in hardships and persecutions and difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. Holy God the Father, we pray that today, even today, uh, you have called us and called us to be gathered here. We pray. Uh, in thanksgiving for the love that you have given us. We pray that all these souls may hear the word of God by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray uh, for those precious souls and the souls of their families that you would bless them uh, because they have given their holy offerings to you. We pray that you give them grace and your blessings. Please bless these holy families that have given their offerings to you. Just bless them that you would help them and bless them. Just bless the souls and the souls of their families. Just help them. Just bless all, each and one of these families who have given their offerings to you. Although we have not mentioned all the names that have given their offerings today, yet we pray that you remember each of them. We pray that you remember each of their offerings and that you'd welcome them powerfully in their souls and in the souls of their families. And to those, to those who seek to aggressively invade into the kingdom, we pray that you give great power to them. And we pray that they will not be oppressed by the power of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Amen. May God bless in their souls all those who have come and have given their work and to given their uh, their offerings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this healing crusade uh, has is has been fulfilled so well, and this is the final day. Uh, as as uh, this will continue to progress, there will be more. There will be more workings and signs, and there will surely be um, signs as people come to receive their laying on of hands. So, uh, so this word is being preached concerning those who have disease. But you must know that Jesus forgave us of our sins and healed us of our diseases. This is the work that Jesus had done. So what did Jesus speak, speak by his word? I came not to do my own will, but to do the will of the Father who sent me. And this is what the Lord Jesus had spoken. So Jesus, he did the work of forgi forgiving us our sins and healing us of diseases. And yet Christianity today, the rest of Christianity today, uh, regard these works in a negative light. And so, 2,000 years ago, what we are doing now is merely the same that was done at that time. We are, we are not supposed to remember Jesus and the works that he did, but we are supposed to do the same. It can be manifested in equal power the same today as it was at that time. We believe today and we obey today and see the great miracles in equal measure.
사는 이 시대에 이때 순종을 하는 겁니다. So we obey today. We will believe today. Whether somebody obeyed a um, hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, or even beyond that, no. Today we obey. Today we believe. There is a there is a limit to the life that one can live in the flesh, but to God and to His power, there is no limit. There is no time limit. Just as the word that Jesus spoke. And the, and the deeds that he had done, they are manifested in the same way, the same power uh, today as it was 2,000 years ago. What we need to do is obey. Yet people do not do this and they only seek to ceremonially remember him. So from time to time we can repent. But if you believe in repentance, in the commandment of repentance, uh, you will see the works. But oh, there are some people who do not believe in the commandment of repentance. So, on that day of the judgment, the people of Nineveh will come and they will condemn the people of this generation because they believed at the preaching of the word and yet this generation does not. And so when Jonah came, preached and preached the word of God, the people of Nineveh who heard this word, they repented. All the people of Nineveh repented. And yet someone greater than Jonah is here. And yet people uh, do not repent at the word of God that is preached in this our modern generation. This world is uh, controlled by the power of the enemy, but by the power of the devil. And yet in the coming of Jesus, the power of the devil has been destroyed. You must believe in this word that is preached. So this generation, which is this generation, which is coming into destruction, fear, worry, anguish, end on end. All these factors, they are becoming destroyed and they should become destroyed. So the works that Jesus did, not everyone believes in these works, not even Christianity. If you believe and then you receive the forgiveness of sins and then you think and then you give your thanks And so in receiving the forgiveness of sins you have freedom And in receiving the forgiveness of sins you receive healing and then you give your thanks offerings And so and yet in this uh in modern Christianity, you witness uh, the healing of diseases and they criticize, persecute and accuse it as heresy. You must know what the true definition of heresy is. Religion is uh, mysticism and heresy. In religion, in uh, mysticism, there is no revelation. It comes about by the emotion of man, by the will of man, by the own ideas that come from the flesh. It comes in accordance with what you seek to wear and seek to drink and seek to uh, eat. This is all mysticism. And so church and so church goers today, they do not have any knowledge and yet and uh, to excuse themselves of their lack of knowledge, they accuse others of mysticism and heresy. This is not uh, something that I had come up by myself, but through revelation, through revelation that comes from the Lord directly. Heal the sick, give life, make the blind see, make the deaf hear, make the lame walk, drive out demons, preach the word, preach the truth, preach the revelation, preach life. This is the revelation that came by commandment from the Lord. So that revelation that came from the Lord, 
You merely, in accordance with this revelation, you merely obey it. This is not mysticism. Mysticism and religion, they have no revelation. So even, uh, even in theological terms, even in theological terms of religion, if you think, if you, um, if you might think, you might think that uh, they know everything. And even though they know it, they do not teach it. They do not teach it as if they have forgotten the truths of the word. Because there are many, there are many religions in this world, and there are many doctrines and theologies. Even Christianity has them. But what must we, what must uh, we differentiate, and what must we hold to hold as important? That Christianity has revelation. Christianity has received revelation from the Lord. Christianity uh, is, uh, uh, we might say, the re re the religion of revelation. And some people uh, make the confusion that you must see visions in order to receive revelation. No, this is the revelation that has been commanded, that has been directed from God. Re revelation has been commanded from God. So, your uh, God has commanded revelation to direct your speech, your faith, your action exactly in accordance what is commanded by God and this is revelation that has been given to us so the faith that Abraham had what is the faith that Abraham had? it is promise it is promise this promise in itself is revelation it was revealed by God God had given it by revelation this is not something that comes out from your own ideas, from your own uh, uh, fleshly emotion, no. There is a saying, uh, devotion wins the favor of heaven. Uh, this is a, a saying, a, a folk saying in Korea. So, so long as you have um, service, uh, uh, religious service, uh, you will naturally think uh, that this is um, right, but this is not the language of Christianity. Even magicians and shamanists, even they, even uh, they all follow these ideas. They follow religious piety, religious devotion. This is mysticism. If you have religious service and devotion, this uh, is uh, rooted in mysticism. Christianity is, uh, we might say, the religion of revelation. God has given us revelation. God has given revelation to Christianity. If you hear my word and yet do not keep it, I do not judge you. For there is one. For I did not come to give judgment, but to give salvation. However, there is there is one. There is a uh, something that will judge you on that last day if you do not keep it. That very word that I spoke, this word will judge you on that last day. For I did not speak of my own account, but I spoke only what the Father commanded me. I know that His command is eternal life. So whatever I say is exactly what the Father has commanded me to say and to speak. It has been received in revelation by commandment from, by commandment from the Father. If there is no revelation, if there is no pro if there is no word of prophecy, Christ would not come. So in Bethlehem, without the words of the prophets, we would not know, and it would not have been revealed to us that uh, the Christ would be born of Bethlehem, born of the woman, uh, of the womb of a virgin. We would not know any of these things. It is in accordance with the words of the of the prophets that we know that Jesus would come from Bethlehem and the womb of a virgin. 
And so this has been exactly fulfilled as, has, uh, as was revealed by the prophets. And, he, and, and lastly, he would, he would assuredly uh, be born of the genealogy of the kingship of David. All these, all these prophecies must be fulfilled exactly. But mysticism follows, follows religious piety and service without revelation. This is what mysticism is. So what does um, Matthew chapter 24 say? There will, there will come many false prophets and antichrists and they will perform signs and wonders. They will perform these signs and wonders. You must not believe them and you must not believe their words. You must not go to them. Whether they, wherever they, if they are in the desert or if they are in uh, the palace or in any other special place, you must not believe it. Even though they perform signs and wonders, you must not believe it. And some, they believe these lies, they believe these delusions, and they do not, and they, they fall into false Christs and false and false messiahs. And so you will question whether your faith is uh, true. Your faith is true. There will even be those people, Lord, deny in your in your name, drive out demons, perform healings and signs, and Jesus will speak, away from me, you evil doers. For only those who do the will of my Father will be accepted by me. And uh, again, there will be those uh, people, Lord, did we, did we not in your name drive out demons, perform signs and wonders? If you uh, depart from given revelation from God, you will fall out of the favor of God. It must uh, fit exactly as that revealed word that has been given. You must understand this word that is being preached to you right now. So Jesus, where must he come from? He must come completely from the revealed word of the prophets, through the revealed prophecies. And so what are these three that must be exactly fulfilled? He must come from the descendant of David, from the genealogy of David. And so, and it was revealed by the word of the prophets, he will be the savior of the people. Where must he be born? He must be born in the town of Bethlehem. And so, this word was preached in the prophets so that we would know and remember that, he, that Jesus must be born of the town of Bethlehem. And so there are some different, um, different uh, dates of, of the traditional remembrance of the birth of, of, the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, maybe in Russia or in other places, uh, their calendar is completely different. And so we may, and oh yeah, and yes, we may have, um, we may remember the birth of Jesus on uh, on the December twenty fifth because we have received um, some indirect influence. Yet we must not think that he had uh, been born precisely on this date. It is only, it's only for the purpose of remembering Jesus, not the exact date. So where was he born? Where was he born? Where was he born? In exact, uh, in exactly in accordance with the revealed word by the prophets. For those three are qualifications that he was born in the genealogy of David that he was born in the town of Bethlehem and that he would be born of the body of a virgin. And so, he, again, he, was, he would be born in the body, in the, he would be born in the town of 
Bethlehem. This has spiritual significance, spiritual importance. And it is only by the coming of the Holy Spirit, it is only by the coming of the Holy Spirit that we would understand these spiritual realities. If Jesus was not born of the body of a virgin, or that he was born in Bethlehem, or that he was born in the genealogy of David, he would not be the Christ. He would not have any spiritual um, significance as the Christ. He was born of the body of a virgin. He came as the Emmanuel. He was born from Bethlehem and was born in the genealogy of David. All these qualifications as revealed by the prophets must be fulfilled. So, wherever somebody boasts that he is something important, or somebody boasts that he is something important, do not go and hear them, do not believe them. There were many uh, founders of um, founders of quasi-religions, of sex, and they boast that they are something important, but you must not go and hear them and believe them. And so there was one particular revivalist, a, uh, there was a, um, a, a quite a distinguished revivalist, and he was a very uh, uh, successful in uh, tent revivals, and yet he would, um, and then he would later go about and saying that he was the, uh, the, the Lamb of God. He would go saying strange things like these. He would say, he would start to say that he is the Christ and that he is the Lamb of God. And then, having said this, uh, he would invite large crowds who were interested. And even there was a famous celebrity, a famous film star, even he was interested and he would go, he would go to here. And so, and there was this event in which they showed, they showed off um, uh, a pool, a swimming pool that was full of uh, uh, water covered in red. We do not know what it was, but he would, they would go about saying that this was special blood. And yet, uh, and so, and this revivalist would do very ostentatious and very, um, very peculiar things, and this was all to invite large crowds. So, we must not depart from the revelation that is given by Jesus, by God. It is through the revelation commanded by God, and through this, and we receive this, through the revelation from God. And so God had spoken His revealed word, and through this word we are healed of our diseases. Even our sins, you have already been forgiven by the word that I have spoken to you. You have been forgiven by this word, by this revealed word that has been spoken by God. Where can you receive this forgiveness? From, from uh, the God that was from the very beginning and He was with, and He was with God and He was the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. And who was the one that testified to the to the word. He was the one who came in the flesh and came as the Son of Man. The Word became flesh. You must receive the Holy Spirit, then you will know Jesus, and then you will know the Word. And then, if you know the Word, you will know the Father who had sent Him. There is no one that can come to me except there is no one can go to the Father except through me. I am the door. I am the way. 
anyone who goes who have who have um came before me were thieves and deceivers it is no one can go to the father except through jesus i came not to seek my own glory but to seek the glory of the father no one has seen the father no one can deny the father and this can only be known through the revealed word this can only be known through the revealed word and we know this through this word this word should be very simple and be very simple to understand so you know I'm confident in you that you are all intelligent you can understand this word so through this revealed word who were the Berians? Who were the Berians? And so uh, Paul came, came and he came and uh, he preached this new word, this new commandment. And they were uh, intrigued by this new message. But some villages, some villages are uh, in hearing this new word, they were full of joy and they were um, very eager, ecstatic. But what was special about the Berians? They heard the word of Paul and they and they checked it. They checked it to see um, through the scriptures if this was true. They checked to see if this was true. So this is what the special quality of the Berians are. They examined the scriptures every day to see if the word preached by Paul was indeed true. They checked it uh, with the revealed word that had already been given to them. So the word preached by Paul, they, he checked it to see uh, if what the word that Paul preached was true. This is not the New Testament. It is actually the Old Testament that the Berians had. So Berians, it is not, um, you say, barrier, barrier. No, they were, they were more gentlemanlike. They would not criticize. They would not accuse. They would not condemn. But they would check the scriptures to see if this was true. If this was right, if this was assured by scriptures, you must not just believe uh, outright, but according to the testimony given by Jesus and then was preached by Paul, so we check the scriptures. And then once you checked it, you will know and you will discover it is in exactly uh, fulfillment with the scriptures. It is in complete uh, satisfaction with the scriptures. And so it was, and so they found out Jesus was indeed born in Bethlehem, that he was indeed born of the body of a virgin, and that he was uh, from the genealogy of the kingship of David. And so um, Thessalonica, Thess uh, Thessalonia, and so the moment they heard the word about Jesus they would react violently they would criticize and accuse but the Berians the Jews in Berians were unlike this they were very noble in character they were gentlemanlike Beria was uh, the capital city of the area of the surrounding area uh, it was uh, Beria was the uh, a central city a very important city in Mesopotamia although although Jesus so Beria, it was uh, the capital city. It was the capital. It was considered the capital city of that area of Macedonia. It was there. There were many intellectuals, many well-educated, noble people. 
like uh, the no like uh, the affluent areas in Seoul and the educated areas in Seoul. It was exactly like that. Not not those people who would go wherever wherever they heard an inst interesting uh, message. No, but they would hear the message in a noble way, in an educated way, and they would check the revealed. They would check the revealed scriptures to see if it was true. This was the attitude of the Berians. They were noble, unlike uh, the cities or the other cities. It does not mean that uh, they would wear um, outward, uh, outward smartness. No, but it meant that they would not just go wherever they heard an interesting or or spectacular message, but they were they were rational in the sense that they followed the reveal word. They were noble. They checked with the revealed scriptures to see if it was indeed true. So through this revealed scripture, when it commands today, when it gives the word today, although it was preached 2,000 years ago, and so we have been born 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus, and yet when it has been preached today, do not have a closed heart, do not have a hardened heart. Do not have a closed and unbelieving heart when uh, the commandment of today is preached. For if, if you are, are doubting and if you are closed in heart, you will enter into destruction. So when that word, that commandment today is preached, you must believe. You must possess it. You must accept it. So this word is that word that continues uh, eternally and has and possesses the same power and same effect. And so there are those who experience a uh, healing by the grace of God, but when they go home, when they start to go home, they feel something strange. Oh, they feel the, man the manifestation that something is strange and that they, they fall into doubt. They fall into doubt. And then you must ask, was this by revelation or was this by your own feelings? Was this by your own emotions? You must ask this question. Was it from your own emotions or was it from the revealed word? Was it from the revealed commandment or was it from your human emotions? So uh, when one goes home, one will, one will uh, feel something strange in the body. You must know when the laying on of hands, when the rev revelation of the laying on of hands is applied, there will be cleansing. There will be spiritual cleansing, noticeable cleansing. And so after this is done, after this is done, it will surely be uh, healed and manifested sooner or later. Once the, the revelation of the laying on of hands is applied, it will, it will surely be healed. And so, so since the origin of that disease has departed, so the manifestation of it will come. But yet you must, and yet you are healed, you go home, you feel something strange. And then they will start to doubt and question. And then they will start saying, oh, oh I feel diseased again. You then, if you go about it in this way, you will know that there will indeed be no healing. You must believe in your heart and grasp it in faith with your heart. According to your faith, will it be done to you? 
as found in the book of Matthew. This is the same word that has the same power, same effect as was preached 2,000 years ago. This, what we have received is revelation given from God. You must understand what is being preached to you now. I am a believer of revelation. I am a believer of the revelation of God. I am a believer of the revelation of God. So you must you must remember, be careful not to be a believer of your feelings, your feelings, sensations, or, or any other thing. No, we believe, we believe, we believe in that revealed word that was preached uh, by Paul. So, Paul had preached the word, Paul had preached the word and then the town of Thessalonica, they heard this word, this intriguing word, and they were... And they were, um, they were completely, uh, completely ecstatic about it, eager, eager for it. Yet you must, like the Berians, check and examine the scriptures if it uh, fulfills the satisfaction of the scriptures. So the Berians, they were not, they would not stumble, not even at the word preached by Paul. They will hold firmly to the scriptures. They would examine to see if what Paul said was true. They would not stumble and they would not fall into um, excessive emotions. Because I believe, because I believe in the word uh, that was preached, and I believe exactly as it was preached and revealed, therefore I have no problems in my faith. I do not stumble. So I exhort you all to have the same faith, to have the same attitude through revelation, through believing in the revelation. So, uh, like uh, yesterday, uh, the laying on of hands, this was not created by me, but it was revealed in Scripture, the laying on of hands. So, according to the revelation, the laying on of hands and prayer, and that it, the signs and wonders of God will be manifested. And so this is exactly what was done. And so when uh, one speaks in tongues that the Spirit enables them, this does not come from man or come from some doctrine. So they spoke in tongues that the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak. And so the speaking in tongues is the prayer of the spirit of a man. And so in the past, before you believed, you were in spiritually, you were blind. But once believed, once received the Holy Spirit, as the Spirit enabled, you would speak in new tongues. The tongues, you would speak in new tongues. And the, the Holy Spirit enabled this. And so one will speak in tongues and sometimes it works and sometimes it you pray well in tongues, sometimes you do not so. And so you must uh, compare this with a uh, speech of everyday speech that one person does to another person. If you are speaking with mumbling, uh, would this be sound? Would this be acceptable? No, you must be clear. Even in the speaking of tongues, in the same way that you speak clearly in the speaking of your conversation, daily conversation, so you must be clear in the speaking of your tongues. You say, you say, how, hello, how are you? How was your day? You would speak clearly. If not, you'll be mumbling and nobody would understand you. You say, how are you? 
How are you? How was your day? Have you have you had breakfast? You must be clear. You must be clear, explicit. God, our Father. God, our Father. If you want to be a good singer, if you want to be a good singer, you must uh, open your mouth. It is the same concept here. When you sing praise, you must open your mouth loud and wide. And yet some people mumble and they moan. It sounds like the sound of a sound of a cow. And so they spoke, the disciples, the believers spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. They spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them power to do so, enabled them to do so. So are you just making noise or are you speaking? You must speak it, you must not uh, make a sound. So there were those, if one is zealously speaking in tongues, if one is zealously speaking tongue, the person next to them might see, might uh, see, and they might not like it. It seems disturbing. On the outward, and the outward appearance, it seems disturbing. Because if you do not speak it clearly, explicitly, loudly, so you must do so. So when you speak in the, when you speak the Lord's Prayer, you must speak it. You do not make sounds, but you must speak it clearly, distinctively. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When you pray in the Lord, you must pray distinctively in the Lord's Prayer and you must speak distinctively when you speak in tongues. You must speak it clearly, distinctively, so that everyone understands you. You must speak it, speak it. Please speak it. This is the same working power of God that was preached uh, back 2000 years ago. Is it the same? It is exactly the same. Because, why? Because it's been given by God Himself. This is the gift that comes from God. God has enabled it. God has enabled it by grace that He has given. By grace, by gift. No righteousness from yourself, no merit from yourself, no goodness in yourself. It comes by gift, it comes by grace. God gave it by grace. So, um, even, even in the kings of ancient Korea, uh, God, uh, the kings, the kings would uh, give the order, 
would give this kind of order or that kind of order. Uh, they would, the kings would give uh, gifts to some of his subjects uh, as a present. And this and the word for this particular order given by the king, uh, it, it does indeed have possessed the meaning of gift, of gift, of gift that is freely bestowed. So, in the same way, the, the, that which has been given by God, it is a gift. You merely receive it and possess it. God will not take it away. So, you receive uh, wisdom, knowledge, all by gift. You receive power, all by gift. You receive the differentiation of the spirits, all by gift. Prophecy, all by gift. The interpretation of tongues, all by gift. Power, all by gift. But it's because you reject this, you reject faith. You do not believe and therefore you cannot accept it. And uh, you cannot go back to God if you, are, if you harshly reject it. And so those, and so those who do not believe and reject it, they will fall into great corruption. Watch what has been given by God as gift. You must honestly welcome it, honestly receive it. And so that which has been given, even I myself, uh, that which has been given for me, I continually use it. I continually obey it. I keep it. So faith, life or faith. It is not um, because God has not given something or God has not bestowed something that you do not, you are not successful in your faith life. It's because you, re you reject it. You do not believe it and you do not accept it. You must use it. You have been given a, a duty. You have been given a commandment. There are some people have received the commandment of a duty to do something and they would say, respond, yes. But in the end, they do not do it. This has been... Um, it has also been commanded in the Bible. Yet the second, the second son, he said, no, I won't. But actually he ended up doing it. But the first, uh, the first son said, uh, yes, but he did not do it. So what is corruption? It is that when you have been commanded, when you have been uh, ordered to do a duty from God, and yet, you reject it and you do not accept it in faith. So even um, the archangel Lucifer, uh, him and all the angels that uh, were under him, they, after rebelling against God, they were expelled, they were expelled out of heaven. And they entered, uh, having been corrupted, they were expelled and they entered into the world, Hades. So please, um, check the scriptures. Check the scriptures, see if it is true. And so, uh, in... Uh, in first Peter, in the letter of Peter, it says, to, to those to those who did not obey the duty given by God, but left their own homes. So, Paul, so I'm, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it states, I speak in tongues more than all of you and I am thankful to God. So, so I am thankful to God. So in the same way, do not become corrupt.
and keep that commandment that God has given you. So, the power to perform healings and signs has already been given you. If your diseases have indeed been healed, the power to, uh, to truly uh, fulfill this healing has already been given you. So the power to give the healing and the power to be healed is absolutely the same. The power to heal others and to po the power to be healed in yourself it is the same. So why do you deny yourself this power? Until that power that has been promised by God is truly fulfilled, do not rest. God, does not, God is not a man that he lies or that he changes his mind or he regrets something. And so it is written in the Bible, the blessing that has been commanded by God has been now given, and it cannot, and it can, it cannot help but be fulfilled. This word of blessing has been spoken. I cannot reject this commanded blessing now. So do not reject this command, this commanded blessing. It will surely come back with, with fruit. And there are those, there are those who were receiving the laying on of hands. So after you receiving the laying on of hands, uh, money does not money does not immediately drop out of from heaven. You receive the laying on of hands. You are blessed. You are blessed, and then you go about your ways, and you will finally see it. You receive the laying on of hands. And then you go about your ways, you go about your business, and you will see, you will perceive the prosperity of your ways. And then you will know that you received, you will see, you will see those blessings. You will see those blessings in process. But why do you not wait? Why do you doubt? Do you understand what is being spoken to you? So, so those, to those who truly desire to remain diseased, say amen. So let us see if, so ask yourself if you believe this. To those who want to hold to the idea that they are diseased, say amen. To those who regard the disease as the enemy, say amen. If you do so, then you must drive it out as the enemy. And so when people have prayed, they have prayed in the name of Jesus and once they have entrusted it to God, the moment they leave the assembly, the moment they leave the worship, they take that uh, request that they have prayed to God and they, and they take it with them back home. They do not entrust it to God. And so they put it right back into their pockets. So the, the problem is that you are taking it back, you're taking it back into your heart. You are not entrusting it to God. Entrust it to God and then leave it to Him. Do not take it back and put it into your pocket. Do not put it back into your purse.
Entrust it to God. Entrust it to Him. Do not take it back with you. Do not hold it in doubt, hold it in hesitation. Once you have once you have prayed to Jesus in the name of Jesus, uh, once you have prayed to God in the name of Jesus, entrust it to God. So there were so there was a revival um, in another church. So one, some, there was someone who, uh, who um, was uh, severely uh, sick, severely sick, she was um, suffering, and she was limping. She was severely uh, sick on one side of her body, and then she, uh, but she was healthy on the other. She was ashamed of it, and she would try to, uh, clothe, she would try to cover it, try to cover it with clothing and with her bags. <laughs> and it was it was uh, it was so funny she was intending to um she was intending to take those things with her but did she not come to throw these away <laughs> and so and so she indeed received uh, she indeed uh, had the demon driven out of her and she finally uh, was able to let go of it. She didn't need. She didn't need any of it. And so it was found out that that person. She later. She um. She um. She uh, founded a church and she did a ministry. So entrust it to God. So worry, fear, worry, fear. Entrust it to God, or are you gonna keep it with you? Entrusted to God. To those who entrusted to God. To those who entrusted to Him. Say Amen. Although you must, although you must not believe in the word that I speak, believe in the revealed scripture, the revealed word. We are those who believe in the scripture, in the revealed word. And so Jesus said, oh, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So to those who by revelation receive uh, the laying on of hands, once the laying on of hands is applied, and then even 20 or 30 years later, uh, there is the experiencing of the healing. Because there is power and effect in the laying on of hands. If you do not believe, it is God who is grieved. We must. Oh my soul, have the faith of revelation. Have the faith of revelation. Have the faith of revelation. Believe in the revelation. Do this for the sake of your soul. Not just today and then you leave it late and then you do not have it later, but have it all, have it eternally for all time. If you have accepted this faith, this revealed faith, then say Amen. There was one person, there was one person who requested the laying on of hands uh, because she couldn't give birth. Some were, some were, some indeed were healed. Somebody, somebody else was blind, and that person ended up seeing.
And yet there are some cases when this is not the case, and yet they will question within themselves, am I cursed? Am I, uh, am I separate from the favor of God? So, and so in accordance uh, with what is found in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, because the revelations uh, that were given to me was so great in order to keep me humble, in order to keep me from pride, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. He was a messenger of Satan to torment me, and this was given me to keep me humble. Paul himself had diseases, he had sufferings, he had illnesses, and yet he would preach, and yet he would perform signs and healings himself. He had a great trouble with, um, with his eyes, with uh, some degree of blindness. Some people say this, and even, and even uh, the word that he exhorted to Timothy. He uh, counseled Timothy, drink some wine because of your frequent illnesses. And so even, even um, on account of the word that was spoken by Paul, there are some of these interpretations. So what is clear? Um, Paul had some, dis, uh, some severe suffering with the problem with his eyesight. And Timothy had frequent illnesses. So there was given me a messenger of Satan, a thorn in my flesh, to torment me. He was a messenger of Satan. He was a work of Satan. He was uh, given to bother me, to bother me. And this was given me so that I would not be puffed up in pride, so that I would remain humble. This was permitted to be given me so that I would remain humble. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away. Three times I pleaded with Him to take it away. Paul prayed honestly to God. But uh, what the Lord Jesus spoke to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's great power might rest on me. So, in the same way as what is preached yesterday, you must be so ashamed, so humiliated, like that you are completely naked and are only wearing a linen afford, just like David had done when he had served and welcomed God. This is the way you have to serve God. Because if you don't, God will be ashamed of you. My, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Your weaknesses, your weaknesses be diseases. You should be, you should boast of it. Even though you yourself lay hands and perform healings and signs. Even though you yourself perform ha perform signs and healings, but I have, but weakness is there, weakness is there. Weakness and suffering is there to keep you humble to keep you humble. This was, so in, in my case, in my case, 
I did not receive this power by my own um, religious piety or service. No, it was given me. By the power of God. And I boast, and I boast of this. I boast of the weaknesses that I have so that Christ's power may rest on me. I will boast all more gladly about my weaknesses and my sufferings and my difficulties, exactly as what has been spoken by Paul. So the way of the cross is shame to those who do not believe, but to those who do believe, it is the boast. It is their boast. And this connects exactly with um, what is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So although I myself cannot fix my own weaknesses, yet so that I can fix others, I can heal others and have this power to heal others, to drive out demons, so that his power may rest on me. So I will continue to remain so that I can work for your strengthening of your faith and uh, the furthering of the fruit. I myself have weaknesses. But I am not, uh, I do not stumble because of this. I'm, I am not uh, uh, discouraged because of it. Although, just like Paul, I prayed earnestly for it. But I have the same attitude. I am in no way ashamed. Because I know that this is not my own power. Because it is uh, that God is using me. So the uh, the useless So there is a a special type of grass, special type of crop that is uh, sown together and becomes uh, like a uh, uh, a sack, a material for sack that is used in the countryside. It is the same thing. It is, um, it is the same thing. So I myself, I consider myself as, um, as a, a worn-out bag that is used, that can be used for the sake of the Lord. So there is nothing to be disappointed or nothing to be dis discouraged about. But you know that you are used by, used by the Lord and you are given, and you are thus given the power of God. So I myself have um, personally experienced um, great difficulties um, in high blood pressure, uh, some issues about diabetes. Uh, in the past, it has, re it has reached uh, very high levels, very cautious levels. Yet I am not afraid, I am not worried. But later on, it um, it reduces in the in the levels. It uh, it later on uh, is reduced in its severity. But uh, when uh, it has been uh, very severe in the past. Yet I am in no way ashamed or I am no way discouraged. And it has even gone um it has even gone to the point it goes um lower levels. 
cautiously low levels and I had to I actually had to I had to drink something and eat something to um, restore those levels but my purpose has never changed my direction as itself has never changed and so there are times when it reaches cautiously high there are times when it reach, reaches cautiously low whatever whatever it is it matters not so so it is the commandment that we are used by God not that we do not have any power the power God has given is so great already Paul although he himself had weaknesses yet in place of his weaknesses God's great power was manifested so ex expect the great power of God expect the great working of God that you will be used by him and so you will know uh, exactly has been commanded oh this weakness this weakness it was that the power of God would remain on me and that I would do the work of God but if you do not do the work of the Lord and just um, abide in your own troubles, abide in your own difficulties, you cannot do anything. You cannot seek to achieve anything. You must know the reality that you receive the revelation of God. And you must know and be thankful and be thankful that you are holy but you must not uh, uh, revel in the disappointment in the doubt in the discouragement if you have this attitude uh, this word will have no rel no relation to you you must be thankful the reason why you do not receive you pray but you have not received because you seek for your own you seek for your own uh, fleshly desires you seek your own fleshly desires and that is why you do not receive it is only for your flesh that you ask for your desires that you ask that you do not receive so when you pray do not pray like the pagans for they think they will be hard because there are many babblings do not uh, pray like the pagans for God knows what you need even before you ask him so this is how you should pray and the Lord Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer the Father knows what you need even before you ask Him. Therefore, this is how you pray. And so, the prayer that the Lord Himself had taught us. Let us sing, let us pray this prayer together. It has been as it has been revealed. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Where is the Father? Where is the Father? Where is God? He is in heaven. I have preached this end on end. Heaven is not that physical creation, but it is the spiritual creation. Is heaven the physical? Is it the physical uh, in which it has moist cloud, air, wind? Or is it that spiritual creation? So when you pray, you say, Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. Heaven is not the physical creation, but the spiritual creation. God is spirit. 
So know him, know him as spirit. God is spirit and know the spirit. God is spirit. God is spirit. Therefore know him as spirit. Know, know him. Our Father in heaven. And so God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the pers uh, these persons, they are independent. And yet, and yet, the law that they follow is the righteousness of God. It is righteousness. This is the law that is followed. The righteousness of God. Our Father who is righteous and who is in heaven. And so the reason the Son obeyed, the reason the Holy Spirit obeys is because it's because uh, the Father is righteousness. And God seeks to help us in accordance with the will of the Father. So the Father who dwells the Father who is righteous and who dwells in the spiritual heaven. So what is the name of the Father? This name is Jesus. So this name of Jesus, hallowed be this name, which originally belonged to the Father. The name of the Father, which is the name of Jesus, this name be hallowed. So the, uh, the concept of hallowed, it means sanctified, set apart, set apart. So by this name, by this name one is sanctified. This name itself is holy. This name itself is set apart and sanctified. So God has sanctified God has sanctified this name that has been completely set apart. So this name alone is holy and uh, set apart. The name of Jesus is holy. So even in this nation there was a president, there were politicians, yet we do not necessarily bow down before a president. Why? Because we, um, we uh, bow down only before the name of Jesus. We bow, so, and God exalted Jesus so that at the, at the name of Jesus, everything in heaven and on the earth and in the seas would bow down at the name of Jesus. God exalted Jesus so that everyone would bow down at the name of Jesus. And to this name, we are humble. We must bow down at the name of Jesus. Whoever bows down, whoever is humble before the name of Jesus, whoever does so will thus glorify the name of Jesus and uh, sanctify the name of Jesus. 
So in this created world, there is a constant conflict between the created light and the created darkness. But with the light of God, the light that comes from God, there is no conflict and there is no darkness, no shadow. It is eternal. So the light, uh, in the presence of the light, the darkness flees. The darkness departs and flees. Our causes will flee. Diseases will, cle will flee in the presence of the light that comes for God, from God. Why? Because this light is eternal. You will, you will know this so well. So this new book that is published, Oh My Soul, Where Are You Going? You will know, you will know and understand all these things. So, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God will come. This kingdom of God, you do not merely say this out of ritualism. In this kingdom, there is no darkness, no shadow, no suffering. The kingdom of light, the kingdom of life, the kingdom of love, this eternal kingdom, this kingdom come. You must know this for sure, with sureness. Have you understood this? This kingdom come. The kingdom of God come. You, the, the will of the Father be done as it was done in heaven, so it be done on earth. So what did Jesus say? He came not to do his own will, but to do of the will of the Father who sent him. So exactly as the will of the Father was done in heaven, so the will will be so this will will be done uh, will be done on earth in the coming of the Son and so the presence of the church is the continuance of the will of the Father Jesus has gone up to ascend it to heaven and just as the Son had himself done the will of the Father and so in the coming of the Holy Spirit in the coming of the Holy Spirit, the will of the Father continues to be done. So the will, the work that Jesus had done, this be continued. So as Jesus had come, he did as he did the will of the Father. So the Holy Spirit comes and the church continues to do it. So the will of the Father, the will of the Father that was done through Jesus and was surely fulfilled in the coming of the Holy Spirit. In the coming of the Holy Spirit, uh, we pray that the power of God will continue to come so that we can continue to do our part to serve the church and to do the work of the church. If you believe in Jesus, say Amen. So, so the body of Jesus is the church. But do you love the body of Jesus? You must question it. So, and then it says, uh, give us our daily bread, forgive us our sins, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one, from the demons. Deliver us from demons. This is how we are taught. So in the Lord's Prayer, in believing it, in believing in its meaning, there is great power here. God is spirit and he is the righteous one. He is spirit and he dwells in the spiritual heaven. And this name of Jesus, this name of Jesus, which is the name of the Father, this name be hallowed and glorified. 
And in the coming of Jesus, uh, he had come to do the will of the Father and then later ascended back to heaven in accordance with the will of the Father. So we continue to do this will when the Holy Spirit comes. And the church is the fullness of Him who fills everything in every way. And so God has set Christ as the head of the church. The head of the church is Christ. So you must pray. The reason you do not accept or you do not receive, the reason is the reason that you do not receive is that you ask in accordance with your fleshly desires. Please believe in the revealed word given by God. Please reveal in the revealed scripture. So although in the evening, in the morning, I often speak about the healing of diseased, but in the evening, I speak about, about uh, the spiritual mission commanded by God. You must check this with the revealed scriptures. If you have heard this word well, say Amen. So let us sing the hymn now. So you sing this hymn, so the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please sing louder, sing louder.
So, what the Lord Jesus had spoken, at the day of judgment, the people of Nineveh will come and condemn the people of this generation because they repented at the preaching of the word of God from Jonah. And yet one is greater, who is greater than Jonah is here. You must all seek to believe the word of Jesus, the word spoken by Jesus. Hear the word spoken by Jesus and believe it. Please pray honestly now. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, please walk in us. Lord Jesus, walk in. Lord Jesus, walk in us now. So believe in the revealed word. Receive grace. Receive this revealed grace. Believe in this word. Put your right hand on your on the top of your head. That this effect, this power may be eternal. According to the word, according to the revelation, when this comes into your spirit as light, it'll be eternal. Okay, go! 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 Keep praying! Keep praying! Keep praying! Be full of grace! Holy God the Father, according to this grace that you have given us, this revealed word, we pray that we will eternally keep this faith. We pray that you'd work in us, that you would give us blessing to those who have been healed. Please uh, fully restore them according to your revelation. We pray that we, may, we will not reject it and we will not doubt it, but you would work great power. In the name of Jesus we pray. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the working of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit work on all those by grace and that they will not doubt and they will be they would that they will be thanks in the name of Jesus amen
아멘. 아멘. May God bless all those who have heard and believed. 오늘 저녁에는 오늘 저녁 여러분들의 정말 인색한 마음 뿐지 말고 so um so as as the opportunity comes, one must not be hesitant. Must be not be hesitant in their offerings, in their service, devotion. And so, and so, I all exhort you to receive grace in the name of Jesus Christ. So please now pray now. And to those who need to do um, uh, all that they need to do, please do so. To those who um, who are going to receive um, the laying on of hands, this is not just the driving out of demons, but the blessing, but the laying hands of the blessing. Please believe it. Now, please pray. Please pray.